hello friends let's start with the next test test number 5 first question in this test is which of the following provisions of the constitution of india have a bearing on education right so basically it is directive principles of state policy it is very true right so select the correct answer using the codes given below so automatically option b is gone rural and urban local bodies so it is very true that almost we have seen zilla parishad school Uh, municipal corporation school so every where then second option is there so second 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 so all options have fifth schedule it basically talks about scheduled area and scheduled tribe sixth schedule it talks about tribal area seventh schedule now seventh schedule talks about the division of powers legislative powers between center state and concurrent so basically seventh schedule definitely contain a subject on education you must be knowing we have transferred five subject from state list to concurrent list the subject involve one of the subject is education so seventh schedule also has this mention of education so first and fifth is there so automatically first option is gone now we have to check about 3 and 4 so basically 3 and 4 they also talk about administration and control of scheduled area scheduled tribe and tribal area so basically correct option is d if it is not possible for you to come to a conclusion then ultimately you try to mention the thing in a simple manner clear it was first question coming to second question in india other than ensuring that public funds are used efficiently and for intended purpose what is the importance of the office of controller it it has made control it is not controller it is comptroller and auditor general that is cag cag exercise exchequer control on behalf of parliament when president of india declared national emergency or financial emergency first statement cag reports on the execution of projects or programs by the ministers are discussed by public account committee see here i am not or you are not many time it happens that you are not aware about this first statement but we are very well aware about the second statement which says that cags reports are discussed by public account committee so here second statement is correct if second statement is correct ultimately first option is gone now let's try to understand third and fourth statement information from cag reports can be used by investigative agencies to press charges against those who have violated the law while managing public fund it is true that cag reports can be used as evidence so third statement is true when third statement is true ultimately option b is gone now we have to check about four statement that is going to decide our answer see while dealing with the audit and accounting of government companies cag has certain judicial powers for prosecuting those who violate the law cag has certain judicial power is a correct but cag cannot prosecute a person those who violate the law why because most of the functions of the cag are of post mortem in the nature right so fourth statement is wrong if fourth is wrong d option is gone ultimately correct option is 2 and 3 clear so this way you have to come to the answer if you are not aware about first statement or not you can come to the answer in this logic clear now few important things for your examination first thing the most important article of the cag is article 148 second important point the law relating to the functioning of the cag is cag functions powers authorities and responsibilities act of 1971 so the law is of the year 1971 third thing about this law is right now cag act as both accountant as well as auditor for state governments this is important line right now cag act as accountant as well as auditor for state government whereas cag act as auditor for central government it means cag do not act as accountant for central government there is another office which is called as cga cga stands for controller general for accounts so the cga he act as accountant for central government he act as accountant for central or we can call it as union government right now one important thing which you have to keep in mind cag act as comptroller in britain right but he do not act as comptroller in india means what see what is basic difference between these two statements it says cag act as a comptroller in britain but he or she do not act as comptroller in india in it means what in case of britain 
the respective ministries have to take permission from the cag before spending the money whereas in case of india ministries do not require any permission from cag for spending money in india as in case of india most of the expenditures in india are of post mortem nature that is cag examines the expenditure once they are being spent by respective uh, concerned ministries that's why cag act as controller in britain but he or she do not act as controller in the india so this is simple case here one important line from examination point of view the cag is also the external auditor of government owned companies remember this thing cag is also the external auditor of government owned companies first thing and second case the functioning or all other procedures of the cag are mentioned in the part 5 of the indian constitution here the next question is from economy we'll go for questions from economy now from economy in this year basically whatever questions that were being asked in the economy they were mostly from the uh, from uh, what we can say they were mostly from government scheme very least amount of questions were being asked on the basic concepts of the economics first question which of the following can be said to be essentially the parts of the inclusive governance see they are not talking about inclusive growth they are talking about inclusive governance so first permitting the non banking financial companies to do the banking establishing effective district planning committees in all the district increasing the government spending on public health strengthening the mid day meal scheme see all the 2 3 and 4 options they are mostly related with the governance or they are mostly related with the social sector whereas first option is related with what it is related with capital market or it is related with banking or money market so that's why if you try to check it 1 2 3 4 there is contradiction between these three options and first option so this is the reason why for this particular question correct option is c that is 2 3 4 are part is the correct code of inclusive governance clear you have to search you have to make a set about the contradictory point in this manner clear this is third question Now let's go for fourth question very very important interesting right with reference to national rural health mission that is nrhm which of the following are the jobs of asha asha's full form stands for accredited social health activist a trained community health worker what are the options first statement is to accompany women to health facility to antenatal care checkup using pregnancy test kit for early detection of pregnancy providing information on nutrition and immunization conducting the delivery of baby see in this case remember fourth is not the work of asha only first three statements are the work of the asha fourth is not so in this way correct option is 1 2 and 3 only here i just want to give you some important information about asha that you should keep in mind first statement asha's full form stands for accredited social health activist while writing in your upsc mains examination you can use a particular line asha is a major strategic intervention under the nrhm major strategic intervention here it is expected that asha will work as a trained women community health worker what were the functions which are expected to be performed by asha universal immunization safe delivery care of the newborn prevention of water born and communicable diseases and improving the nutrition promotion of household sanitary toilets it is expected that there will be at least one asha per 1000 population remember try to remember this data there should be one asha per 1000 population this is expected strength of asha one asha per 1000 population now one important exception for this scheme the scheme has been extended to whole country except goa puducherry and chandigarh remember the scheme is not there in goa then puducherry and chandigarh right next question is how does the national rural livelihood mission that is nrlm seek to improve livelihood options of rural poor see this first question it involves a kind of blunder remember the most important thing nrlm is basically related with self help group of the women shgs right bachat gat that is famously referred as so let's go for the options by setting up large number of new manufacturing industries agri business center see self help groups and large manufacturing industries these are two extremes of a scale so first option is wrong if first option is wrong automatically a option is gone c option is gone d option is gone so correct code is two only by strengthening self help groups and providing skill development so this is the 
करेक्ट ऑप्शन और करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इन दिस क्वेश्चन बाय सप्लाइंग सीड्स फर्टिलाइजर डीजल पंप्स सेट्स माइक्रो इरिगेशन इक्विपमेंट फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट टू फार्मर इट इज ऑल्सो नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ नेशनल रूरल लाइवलीहुड मिशन जस्ट आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू ब्रीफ इन्फॉर्मेशन रिमेंबर एन आर एल एम वॉज द इनिशिएटिव अंडर मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रूरल डेवलपमेंट टू ब्रिंग द पुअरेस्ट ऑफ द पुअर अबव पॉवर्टी लाइन बाय एन्श्योरिंग वायबल लाइवलीहुड ऑपॉर्चुनिटीज This particular scheme was launched by UPA Chairperson Sonia Gandhi. It was launched in the Banswara district of Rajasthan. This name is important. It was launched in Banswara district of Rajasthan in the year 2011. What was the aim of this mission? It was to ensure that at least one member from each identified rural poor household, preferably a woman. will be brought under the self help group network in a time bound manner to provide them sustainable livelihood to the household it was the objective of this particular national rural livelihood mission then comes next question the multi dimensional poverty index that is mpi multi dimensional poverty index mpi which was developed by oxford poverty and human development initiative and united nations development program its support covers which of the following first deprivation of education health asset and services at household second purchasing power parity at national level extent of budget deficit and gdp growth rate at national level see those who have read multi dimensional poverty index for them this is very clear that these two statements are wrong they are not related with this multi dimensional poverty index recently multi dimensional poverty index have replaced human poverty index 1 and human poverty index 2 for measurement of poverty so if these two are wrong correct option is 1 only i just want to give you few important things remember first dimension that you have to keep in mind is this multi dimensional poverty index was developed in the year 2010 it was developed by two important institutions one is ophi plus united nations development program ophi oxford poverty and human development initiative and undp it stands for united nations development program first dimension second it was developed in the year 2010 now this multi dimensional poverty index is being counted on 10 important indicators these 10 important indicators have been classified into three important groups first group is about education second group is about health and third group is about standard of living right each group has been given a weightage of 1/3 each each group has a weightage of 1/3 so it is complete 10 indicators now under education just a uh, one thing under education almost two components are there first component is about years of schooling and second is child's school attendance i repeat once again first component is about years of schooling and second is child's attendance these two things are there and this every component has been given a weightage of 1 by 6 then under health again two components are there one is child mortality second is nutrition one is child mortality second is nutrition every component has been given a weightage of 1 by 6 and third which is about standard of living under standard of living almost six components are there they are first one is electricity second is sanitation first is electricity second is sanitation third is drinking water fourth is floor that is whether they have living house or not fifth one is cooking fuel and sixth last one is that is asset ownership so these are six component and every component has been given a weightage of 1 by 18 so this is the basic thing clear so it is about multi dimensional poverty index then next question which of the following is are among the noticeable features of the recommendations of 30th finance commission now what is homework for you you have to go for detailed study of every finance commission and you have to search for the recommendation and you have to search those recommendation in this particular manner this is old question 30th 13th finance commission but i do expect that every one of you should know and here in this case also you should be able to crack this question based on the logic see first basically what is important finance commission is being established under article 280 of the indian constitution finance commission has various functions two important functions are one is vertical devolution of finances vertical devolution of finances talks about devolution or distribution of finances between center and state second is about horizontal devolution it talks about 
distribution of resources between various states so it is a horizontal devolution it act for increasing or augmenting the consolidated fund of india is another function of finance commission so basically it makes recommendation finance commission is an advisory body remember this point very clearly finance commission is an advisory body now let's go for the options a design for the goods and services tax and compensation package linked to adherence to the proposed design a design for the creation of lakhs of jobs in next 10 years in consonance with india's demographic dividend see division or distribution of resources and compensation package could be a part of finance commission but creation of jobs is an executive function it is never a function of finance commission so second option is ultimately wrong if second option is wrong then b option is gone first uh, and c uh, d option is gone then third devolution of specific share of central taxes to local bodies as grant third is correct so correct option is 1 and 3 so first one is correct third one is correct your correct answer is c1 and 3 second is the blunder statement then comes next question which is eighth question what is or what are the recent policy initiatives of government of india to promote the growth of manufacturing sector basically this question was asked in the backdrop of announcement of national manufacturing policy by government of india here remember this national manufacturing policy nmp was announced with an objective to set up mega industrial zones objective was to set up mega industrial zones and create almost 100 million jobs by 2022 it was and under this it said that they are going to establish national investment and manufacturing zones the minimum land area of each nimz that is national investment and manufacturing zone would be or greenfield integrated industrial township with the modern infrastructure is to be minimum 5000 hectares remember minimum 5000 hectares was the minimum area let's go for the question setting up national investment and manufacturing zone first statement is correct if it is correct option b is gone providing the benefit of single window clearances the meaning of single window clearances is that whatever project you are going to clear they will not be more clumsy there will not be red tapism many more licenses will not be required at one place you will get all kinds of licenses and all kinds of clearances will be provided at one place it is a single window clearance so second option is correct if second option is correct ultimately correct answer is 1 2 and 3 because it has only one it has one and three only so ultimately correct answer is d which is 1 2 3 establishing the technology acquisition development fund this is the most important feature of national manufacturing policy of 2012 tadf technology acquisition and development fund same type of fund was being established for textile sector uh, i just give you homework what is the name of that fund you have to search clear so technology acquisition and development fund is the point ninth question consider the following specific stages of demographic transition associated with economic development everyone of you should be aware about this particular demographic transition theory of the population you have to select the correct order of the above stages using the codes given below first is low birth rate with low death rate high birth rate with high death rate high birth rate but low death rate so you have to search what is the correct c correct option is option is c it is 2 3 1 see in the beginning of demographic transition theory there is high birth rate as well as there is high death rate then over a time period what happened your medical facilities improve and it goes for high birth rate and low death rate but ultimately what happen your education and economic prosperity comes and here you reduce the birth rate as well as you reduce the death rate so this is third option so in this way this is first option this is second option and this is third option clear so that is the answer last question in india in the overall index of industrial production the indices of eight core industries have a combined weightage of 37.90 which of the following are among the eight core industries this is a perennial question which is being asked by upsc time and again and everyone should know the names of those eight core industries so here correct answer is 1 2 3 and 4 1 2 3 and 4 so it is c before moving forward just a few important information in case of india the base year for index of industrial production was fixed at the year 1993 to 1994 recently we changed this base year to 2004 and 
द नेम्स ऑफ द एट कोर इंडस्ट्रीज आर सीमेंट फर्टिलाइजर नेचुरल गैस एंड टेक्सटाइल देन सिक्स वन इज कोल सेवेंथ वन इज क्रूड ऑइल सॉरी फोर फाइव इट इज फाइव इट इज सिक्स देन सेवेंथ वन इज क्रूड ऑइल देन नेक्स्ट वन इज नैचुरल गैस सेवेंथ वन इज इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड एट्थ वन इज पेट्रोलियम रिफाइनरी दे हैव कंबाइंड वेटेज ऑफ थर्टी सेवन पॉइंट नाइन जीरो क्लियर सो इट इज अबाउट एट कोर इंडस्ट्रीज ऑफ इंडेक्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल प्रोडक्शन थैंक यू वेरी मच हैव अ गुड डे थैंक यू